Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today I'm gonna to show y'all how I make brisket shepherd's pie. This one's guaranteed to stick to your ribs. Let's get to cooking. So to start out today, I've got a big brisket flat. You can do this with a whole brisket, just with a point, just with a flat, whatever you like. The point is you need some good brisket. And that's what I got today, this big 10 pound flat. It's gonna make a lot of these delicious little brisket bites that I need to make this shepherd's pie. Now, when I'm cooking this recipe, I'm not getting aggressive at all with the trim. I see we've got a little bit of sinew on top of this flat. I am gonna take that off because I wanna make a nice bark all the way around it. Let's look up here at the front tip. See, we got a little bit of fat. Y'all can see that across that front. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that off. I don't need that on there, but that looks good. And I've got some sharp edges. That's okay in this recipe. If you're doing a comp brisket, round that off. But on this brisket, we're cutting it up. We'll look at the bottom side just to see if there's anything I see right away. Look at that. We want this to lay flat, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this off. We're not gonna eat that big hump right there anyway. But the rest of this fat, I want that to render. I want that to give me some flavor. I don't mind if there's a little flat on the bottom of my little delicious brisket bites. Now for seasoning on this brisket, I like me some salt and pepper for this recipe. So I'm using my TX seasoning. It's got that coarse grain salt. It's got that coarse grain pepper. It's gonna have a ton of flavor. You can get pretty heavy with it because it's a big piece of meat. It can take the salt, it can take the pepper. You wanna also make sure when you're seasoning it that you're patting it in on those sides. And while the grill comes up to temperature, I'm just gonna let this brisket set here a few minutes. It doesn't need long, but if you wanted to go a couple hours, hey, you can do that. You can put it back in the fridge, let it set three or four. It's not gonna hurt it. Now to start this brisket out, I'm firing up my Traeger grill. I'm gonna run it about 250 degrees with some pecan pellets. I wanna keep the temperatures on the lower side because I'm developing color. I'm not worried about time, not worried about temperature. I just want that outside bark to look good. I know that salt and pepper is gonna make a nice bark, but I want it to have that nice brisket dark color. When it's right, you'll know it. Let's get it on the pit. So we just need to get the lid closed, let the smoke do its job. All right, y'all, let's see where we're at on the color of this brisket. And like I said, it's not really about time or temperature. I'm going for that look. If y'all can smell this thing, you know how good brisket smells. That's phenomenal, but that color is what you want. You gotta have that bark form. And check that beauty out. You see that salt and pepper rub, that TX on it, it's made that nice crust. Beautiful color, it's shrunk down some, but it's also swole up, it's gotten taller. We're ready to get over here and turn this into some meat for our shepherd's pie. All right, now we got this flat colored right where I want it. And normally I'd wrap it up in paper and then put it back on the pit and get it tender. But since I'm making a shepherd's pie, let me show you what I'm gonna do with it. First, I'm gonna cut it up into bite-sized pieces. A lot like making burn ends. We're just gonna start cutting strips on it at first. And I'm cutting them a little smaller than I would a burn in. You know, that's probably about a half inch or so slice, just going right across this flat. So now we got it cut in strips. You can see they're pretty thick. That's probably about, you know, half inch, three quarters inch. We're gonna come back and cube these strips up now into bite-sized pieces. And I'm wanting to try this now, but I know it's tough. I can feel the knife going through it. It's not, you know, it's not butter tender yet, but that's okay, we're gonna get it there. Now I'm gonna take all these little brisket bites that I got cubed up and get them in a pan, kind of spread them out. We're not crowding the pan, I got them in a full size pan. If you're doing a smaller flat or point, just put them in a smaller pan. I've got some sliced portobello mushrooms, little baby bellis. I got about a medium sized onion roughly chopped, whole head of garlic roughly chopped. Got a few sprigs of thyme, just like a little fresh herb in it, just scatter that around. Then we need a little bit of tomato paste. This is gonna help it thicken up, give it some body. Now we need some liquid, some broth. I've got a can of beef consomme. Now this brisket's gonna keep cooking down. It's gonna give off some juice, some au jus. But I'm fortifying those flavors by adding that can of consomme and I've got some Worcestershire sauce that's going in too. Depth of flavor right there. One more little notch, we're gonna add a can. Good old Guinness stout beer. You don't have to add the whole can if you wanna drink a little for yourself, that's okay too. But I like that flavor that beer gives it. Now to mix it up, I'm not getting crazy. I'm just gonna take my hands, kinda of incorporate that tomato paste a little bit, toss everything together. Now I'm just gonna take some foil, put it right over the top of that pan close it off, trap all that goodness inside. It's gonna steam now, it's gonna braise. We're really gonna break these bites of brisket down. That's what's gonna get them tender. We went low and slow on the front end to get our color, to get that smoke ring. Now we want some heat, we wanna cook them down, concentrate those flavors and get them just mouth tender. That's what I want. So let's go back to the pit. I'm just setting the pan right back on the Traeger. Now taking the temp up here, it wasn't 250 for the first part. I'm going up to 300, you can go 325 if you want to. It's just about getting that brisket tender at this point. It's gonna take several hours, we'll check it here in a little bit, but I want it to be really, really soft before we make the shepherd's pie. 
All right, our brisket's been getting tender in the pan and all that goodness for a little over an hour. It's time to check it and see where we're at. So all I'm gonna do is open the lid. I'm gonna ease in this full. I know it's getting hot. We got some juice going, our vegetables are cooking down. I'm just stirring these chunks of that brisket up. I think 30 more minutes, we're gonna be where we wanna be. It'll be time to turn it into shepherd's pie. All right, we're two hours in to getting our brisket tender in the wrap. After last time I checked it, I know it's good and soft, but check that out. I mean, the brisket little bites have cooked down. We got some juice going in there. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna turn this into shepherd's pie now. Let's go over to the cutting board. Now, we've got the brisket over here, took the foil off, letting it calm down a little bit. What I'm gonna do is just use a slotted spoon, start getting the meat out of the pan, kind of leaving those drippings in the pan. These things have cooked down to what they are just little soft nuggets now. I mean, you've got little bite-sized pieces that just fall apart. Y'all know I'm trying one. Mm -hmm. Man, that don't need no pie. Well, we're gonna do it anyway. There might be a stem of the thyme. You can take that out, put it to the side. So we got our drippings left in the pan. We're not throwing these away. Let me show you what we're doing with them. I've got some regular brown gravy. If you can make mashed potatoes and brown gravy, you got this. So I'm gonna take this brown gravy, add it to a Pyrex dish, and then I'm going with all our drippings right in to this brown gravy. That makes this beautiful brisket gravy. But now, you know what? We're gonna add it right back to it in the bowl because shepherd's pie's gotta have some gravy. Oh yeah. Now we're just gonna gently work that gravy around our brisket. And it's gonna get down in there. You've got beefy goodness right here. Now you just wanna incorporate that gravy, just fold it. We're not really stirring it. We're just getting these brisket pieces happy. And that's gonna be the stuffing for our shepherd's pie. So now we're finally ready to build this shepherd's pie. Just get you a big iron skillet, whatever kind of container you wanna put that's oven proof and start spooning this delicious filling in there. That's the first component. We got the brisket cubed up and cooked down the mushrooms, the onions, the garlic, the brown gravy, all that goodness going in the bottom of the skillet. And now you're gonna take mashed potatoes and put right over the top. You wanna to cover that brisket mixture with these potatoes. And I'm gonna take a spatula and just kind of smooth it around. And if you don't have a good mashed potato recipe, call your grandma, she can fix you up. That's enough potatoes, but we're not done yet. We gotta add some Parmesan cheese to the top. I'm just gonna sprinkle it around. This will help it brown up when we put it back on the pit. You don't have to get heavy with it. And I've got some aged Irish cheddar cheese that I've shredded up. We're gonna top this shepherd's pie with some of that cheese. I don't get real heavy with the cheese, but I like the flavor it gives it and it makes it look good. And who doesn't like cheese? Just going down the middle with it. I'm not putting it all around the edges. And then I got a little bit of green parsley just to give it some pop. We're gonna spread that around. Now that shepherd's pie is ready to go on the pit. And I'll tell you what, that's a load right there, Jack. That joker's heavy. Let's go put it on some heat. So we're still at 300 degrees here on the Traeger. We're just putting it right dead center again. We want to melt the cheese, get those potatoes good and hot, let it brown up a little bit. Hey, and I got enough brisket and potatoes left over to make another shepherd's pie. So make your friends happy. Put that together, slap some foil on it, give it to them, let them cook it in their oven. Guarantee it, they'll be smiling. All right, y'all, I've been eyeballing this cheese and I'm calling that brown right there. That looks Awesome, check that shepherd's pie out. The mashed potatoes, golden brown, bubbling, cheese all melted on top. All right, y'all, now it's hot, it's bubbly, it's cheesy. They call me a fool, but y'all know I gotta try it. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more parsley over the top, just for a little pop. And I got me a little old plate here. We're gonna spoon some of this shepherd's pie out, and just see how we did. Of course, I'm gonna go into that cheesy part of it. Cut me out a nice piece. You gotta have that brisket. Look at that, look at that right there. Now, that's what I call shepherd's pie. I don't know what y'all think, but I'm going in for a bite. Mushroom, little brisket, gotta have the potatoes with the cheese on top. Woo, mm. hold on. Now that is some fire vittles right there. Mm. Hey, y'all gotta give this one a try. It's got a little bit of work to it. You gotta get that brisket cooked first, cube it up, get it real tender, mix that brown gravy with it just to make it extra happy to make you some mashed potatoes. Throw it all in a good old iron skillet and top it with cheese, and you got a delicious dish right there. Thanks for hanging out with me here today at How to Barbecue Right. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to our channel. You know you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even TikTok, and Shell and I will talk about this shepherd's pie on our weekly podcast. If y'all are missing out on that, go over to the podcast channel and give it a like too. We'll see y'all next time. Where you been all my life?